Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from exitautomation.com and welcome to an all new video series from Exit Automation on understanding testim.io. Well, testim.io is an artificial intelligence based tool and we have already discussed about testim.io while we were discussing about the artificial intelligence based automation testing tool era which is something I released like eight months before now. But testim.io is one of the prominent tool in automation testing, which has shown a lot of progress these days. And they have incorporated so many different options that can be leveraged for automation testing. So we are going to be discussing about this tool, testim.io as a video series completely, where we are going to be talking a lot of different details on testim.io, how to make our life of automation testing much easier and how the artificial intelligence plays a key role in identifying the elements and auto healing the elements, which the DOM objects automatically change every time while there happens a new build or release from the developers. Well, in this video, we are going to talk about an introduction and getting started with the AI based automation testing tool, which is nothing but testim.io. All right, so let's get started. Well, in this video, we are going to be discussing about understanding testim.io, signing up and logging in, creating a very simple test case, understanding different components of testim.io and running a simple AI based automation testing that we are going to be recording and playing back directly from our Chrome browser. So we are going to be discussing this whole thing in this particular video. So let's not waste our time and get started with our testim.io. Well, testim.io signing up is much, much easier. And you can see that testim.io has many different automation options right now. So currently testim.io has a beta program for mobile automation testing. So you can run the testim.io directly on your physical machine using the same AI based powerful automation testing recognition capability within your native, hybrid and progressive web app mobile applications. So you can do all of these jars using this particular beta program you can sign up for now. Well, initially we are going to start with a very, very simple approach, which is going to be automating the web applications. So you can see that the products that they have is going to be like automate. So it makes it so easy to build the test and make it so easy to run the test on the cloud with continuous delivery as well. And also, capture the bug and reporting. So you can see that it is a complete end-to-end -end solution to automate, run, and capture the bugs and report it to the developers from one single point of place, which is nothing but testim.io's portal. So you can see there is some pricing options where you can see for the customized plan, you can contact them directly. And if you're gonna be starting with a basic, which is nothing but the one which I'm gonna be starting, you can just click that button and you can land up to this particular page where you can start working with it. So you can see that currently for the free version, they have around 100 execution per month and you can integrate with Jira and Trello and you have one project and you can have a chat support and you can capture for the bug reporting as well. But if you're going to go with the pro version, you can have unlimited number of execution per month and you can connect with Slack, Git, CI, CD and third party grids, visual validations, multiple projects, advanced reports, extended support and grid for cross browser testing. So you can see they also support grid for running the cross browser testing if you want. And you can also see that they by itself have something to run the test on Mac OS, Linux operating system and Windows operating system. So it's not just cross browser, but it's a cross platform based cross browser testing, which is also available within testing.io. And also they support something called as tunneling and web hooks. And you can also run the test from the CLI as well. So there are so many options available and we are going to be getting into all of these details in this particular video series. So to get started, I'm going to be starting with my free version of the login and then I'm going to sign up with my Google account. There you go. And you can see that it shows me the list of tests that I have already tried out and have executed in this particular portal. So the first thing I'm going to do after seeing the test list is I'm going to create a new test. As I said, in this video, we are going to be creating a new test and then we are going to travel through the different components that we have. So once I start creating the test case, you can see that we can touch different components within the testing.io and then we'll understand how we can use the power of testing.io to run a very, very super simple test. So I'm going to hit this create new button there and you can see that it is going to bring me up the first option here saying eaapp.swami.com. So the reason why it brings the eaapp.swami.com is because I have set the base URL 
for this particular test over here within my configurations. So you can see for my settings, I have already set the base URL as eaapp.swami.com for my project execute automation. So because I have set this, every time you go to the automate and then once you click this create new, it's going to bring you this particular URL automatically set for you. But if you have not set that, you can actually set that during the initial phase, which means once you start your recording by clicking this record button, it's going to ask you the base URL and then you can set the base URL and then you can start with it, right? So now I'm going to start recording from this particular URL. So basically the application I'm going to record is the eaapp.swami.com. So we have used this application a lot in many different courses of mine. So I'm just going to go from there. And once I hit this record button, you can see that it is going to open the Chrome browser. But before that, if you're going to start running this particular test, you need to install the Chrome extensions of the testing project. So you can see that I actually have a Chrome extension here, which is nothing but the testing editor. So if I click this testing editor, you can see it shows me that capture screenshot, capture video and bug scenarios, create automated test, open testing.io. So basically this plugin shows these different options here for you and you can do different things based on the text that you can see here. And they are pretty straightforward, so I'm not really going to be explaining this for now. But as of now, just make sure that before you start recording, this particular plugin is something which is really required for you to perform any sort of recording that you are seeing over here, right? So you can see that I did some mouse scrolling here. So every time I scroll, it just keep on recording things for me, right? So just don't worry about this mouse scroll and all those stuff because I'm really not going to be using these guys anymore. So you can see every time I just record, all these options are just coming in. That's fine. So I'm just going to do a login. So once I click login, you can see that it takes a screenshot for me for the login button. And then I'm going to enter the username and I'm going to enter the password, which is nothing but password in our case. And then I'm going to hit the login. And you can see every time I perform an action, it is going to take a screenshot for all those options that I'm doing. And then I'm going to hit this employee list and I'm going to hit the benefit and you can see it click the benefit over there. And then I'm going to hit uh, back to the list and then I'm going to hit the benefit for the auto user. And then I'm going to hit the back to the list and then I'm going to be doing an edit for Karthik. And you can see that it is capturing every single stuff over there. I'm going to change this to 25. I'm going to hit save. Then once I hit 25 and if I hit save, I see the duration works is 25 right now. So I need to verify if the duration work from 24 has been changed to 25 over here. Right? So this is the option that I need to be doing at this point of time. So for doing that, I'm just going to click this plus button here. And you can see there is something called as validation where I can verify validate element text option. So once I hit this, I can now validate the element text, which is nothing but 25. So that, that's what exactly I'm looking for once I do the edit operation over there, right? So once it is done, I will do the log off there and then I'm going to close. So that's the beautiful recording that I have did here. And, but it seems like it's not that beautiful. The reason is because I have so many mouse clicks here. So probably I'm just going to remove all these guys from here so that to make my test more readable and look more beautiful. And you can see it does all this edit operation and then it hit save. And there is one more mouse click here. Probably I need to delete that. So I'll be deleting this guy and this is going to be the validation part. And now I'm just going to save my test case. So once I hit the save, it's going to show me a message that what is the name of the test case that I need to be giving. So I'm just going to say edit benefits and I'm going to hit OK. I'm not going to give any description there. So it is saved. And now I'm just going to run this test. So once I hit run this test, you can see that it's going to open the browser for me. And then it is going to perform the same operation which I did the recording just a couple of minutes before. And you can see that every time I do the execution, it is going to show you the option is currently being executed here. So you can see it clicked the benefit over there for Karthik. 
and then for the auto user you should click that there you go it did modify the duration work to 25 there is a mouse wheel I probably have deleted that see that's the reason I was about to delete that guy over there so it's just struck over there because I have uh, I have already came into the uh, into the operation there and you can see that the test failed and it says that the element not found over there which is correct because we don't really have an element for that so I'm just gonna delete that guy I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna say remove the mouse hover and I'm gonna hit OK that way I can record what I'm actually changing in my test case and now if I try to run this particular test you can see that it is again going to run the same test for me so I need to log off before I do the login there you go so you can see that basically it runs on the same contest meaning it is not going to close the browser every time for you it actually runs in the opened already opened browser for you that's why you can see that it was not even logged off and now it's logging in again and you can see it's performing the same operation which is intended to be and now it's clicking the edit it's gonna change this to 25 it's gonna save it's gonna validate the text as 25 there there you go and the test got passed which is cool and now you can see that a very very simple basic record operation has been successfully completed with even a very very super simple operation that I have did so basically I have did nothing in here just that I have decoded everything and I could able to do a very very super simple test case operation over here and now I'm just gonna delete this drag operation because the drag is completely not required and as you can see every time I hit the save it's gonna ask me this message so I'm just gonna say remove uh, drag step and then I'm gonna hit OK so what is the reason for this like every time once I do a save operation it is asking me all this change list once you click this particular property over here you can see there is something called a see old revisions so if I hit the see old revisions it's gonna reveal me like what are the different versions that it has got so this test created was the first one which I which we created first initially and then I removed the mouse hover so if I hit this view you can see that it is going to show me the change list of what's really happening so it's, it's showing me that you're not watching the latest version of the test so basically it shows me all of these operation even there is like the drag operation being displayed here right and then if I go back and see the older revision of this one the test created you can see I can also see there are like two edits here this time with something I deleted before right so these things you can see from the change log and that's the reason like every time you save it is gonna show you a message and asking you the valid input or maybe the message that you need to give that what is the reason that you are changing this particular test case so this is how the test creation actually happens so once the test has been successfully created the next operation that we need to do grouping operation so basically you can see that I could see there is this login and username I data entry and there is this username uh, setting operation and then there is this click username password and again setting the password over here once I click this I don't really have to click the username I can just enter into the username similarly I don't really have to click the password I can just enter into the password so I'm going to remove this click password as well and then I'm going to click this login button so these three operations that you can see there, clicking the login, entering the username and password, and clicking the login button are basically three or op four operations with same single operation, which is nothing but the login operation, right? So I'm just gonna hold my command key in Mac or maybe shift key in Windows to select all these different steps over here, something like this. You can see that all these four steps has been completely selected. And then I can hit this plus button here so that you can see that I can see the different options that I can perform the last operation is nothing but groups is something where you can add these four into one single group so I'm gonna call this group as maybe login EA and then I'm just gonna hit confirm so that you can see that all the four operations are now sitting under this particular shared group so if I double click this particular group you can see that I can see the login username and password and clicking the login button over there 
right? So all these four options are now currently sitting under this folder or shared group over here. And again, this is just like an organizing your test cases in a much neater fashion. You can keep on reducing the number of uh, steps that you got. And similarly, maybe I can remove this particular mouse wheel as well. And then you can see that I have this option of uh, clicking the employee list, clicking the benefit and clicking the back and clicking the benefit again, clicking the back to list and editing. So this is the editing of the benefit operations, right? So you're doing the basic benefit editing operation in all these four steps that you have got. So once again, I'm just gonna hit this command to select all these options. And then I'm gonna create another group here. And I'm gonna call this as edit benefit. So now you can see that I have two groups and now the test case is even more neater that it has a URL navigation it's going to perform a login operation, then it's going to click the list, and it's going to click the benefit, and then it's going to edit the benefit, and then it's going to verify the text, and then it's going to click the log off button there, right? So I'm just going to hit save, and then I'm going to call this as grouping test cases, and then I'm going to hit OK. So if I just go back to the uh, edit benefit, if I just double click that, you can see that I have this four operation over there, right? So it's all good now. So I'm just gonna again run this whole test and see what's really gonna happen. So basically it is gonna log into the app and then it should perform the same operation that we were doing before. So this is how we can do a grouping operation of all the test cases much easily using testim.io. And the next operation that we are interested in is actually labeling the test cases. So we can actually label the test case as well. So basically, if we go to your test case, and you can see the test has successfully completed this time. So let's say if we want to label this whole test, maybe like a smoke test or something like that, you can hit this label button over here, and you can see there is something called as uh, smoke. So basically, this is something I have already added, or maybe I'm gonna call this as regression. You can see that it is a regression test case. And then I can hit save, and then I can say, added a label and hit okay and the next option that you can see is if you go to this particular automate you can run the automation from here so you can choose this particular option here and then you can run the test from here something like this and it says you that you are about to run one test in your browser keep your browser open to avoid touching the mouse and keyboard while running the test cases just in case and similarly, you can see there is something called a suites where you can create a suite, test suite. So this is something which I have already created and you can create the test suite and then you can create a test plan for your parallel execution and then you can run the test based on the labels that you have created. So this is the regression test label that I've just created. You can use that. And these are the shared steps that I have within my portal, right? And the one which I created is the login EA and the edit benefit. So these are the two that we just created, right? So you can see all these options from here. Then you can capture the bug and then you can run the test cases using the suites that you have created over here in the automated. So if you have a suite like test suite, you can run that using this run option and you can run everything from here and then you can configure things and then you can see the report of your test cases and all those stuff. Well, all these options we'll be discussing in much greater detail in our upcoming video series. But as of now, just be informed that these are the different components available within Test Team at a very, very high level. In our next video, we'll also see how we can work with these test cases to perform different operation, something like scrolling and navigating to the step and then validating and wait conditions and taking screenshots and all those different stuffs in much greater detail. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.